I'd like to thank everybody for being here today. It's it's a, actually an honor to represent our city, and more importantly, the men and women that work here. Uh, I appreciate everybody taking time out of their busy day to watch us honor our, the people that work here and work with us. Uh, I would just ask all the elected officials to just please stand up. By the time I, y'all get tired of me <laughs> reading your name, please stand up. <laughs> Distinguished officers and civilians for their leadership, heroic actions, notable achievements, and service to our community. I'm proud to represent the Galveston Police Department every single day, <clears throat> but today I have more than 50 reasons to do that. It's been a busy few years since Hurricane Ike, and we haven't always stopped to say, hey, outstanding job, or good work, to the people who truly deserve it. So today we're gonna to take a breather and show our officers and our supporters that we recognize and appreciate what they do. Much can be said about our department. It's the oldest in the state. Formed in 1839, we've continued to develop a training ground for law enforcement leadership. We build leaders. Right now, we have eight or more former GPD officers who are serving as chief of police or sheriffs in the state of Texas. Some of these men are here today with us. Andrew McLean, Rick Boyle, Freddie Poor, all those people started, had their career at the Galveston Police Department. I'm proud that those people went on to serve in our community. We're in the game. And when you're in the game, you can't please everybody all the time. You just can't. But what we can do as police officers is strive to do the right thing, learn from our mistakes, and continually improve our performance, and always protect and respect the citizens that we serve. In the ceremony to come, we'll present meritorious commendations, leadership awards, police commendations, civic achievement awards, life-saving awards, a medal of valor. And there's some community members of our, we're going to acknowledge for their work, what they've done for our department and our community. Before we start, I'd like to give a special thanks to the Citizens Police Academy alumni, the GMPA, which also helped us with the cost for this event. Robert Sanders is the president. Patrick Mullins, our barbecue champion and master cooker. You're gonna have some fine food, I promise you. Also, my staff, Sergeant Magellino, Sergeant Buck, Sergeant Sims, Ms. Benavidez, Sergeant Rubio. They've all worked very diligently to try to put this event together in a short amount of time so that we could make sure that we recognize the people that so deserve recognition. And Alicia Baylor, if you forget her, she's the payroll person that she got the money. <laughs> One other person I, I would like to recognize before we begin is my boss, Mr. Muhlenbeck. It's really comforting to have somebody support you, allow you to do your job, and let you do what you need to do, when you need to do it, how you need to do it. So if you haven't met him before you leave, we're lucky to have him in this time in our, in our history. And I would appreciate you to introduce yourself to him because he's been nothing but an asset to our community and our department. And Mayor, y'all deserve a good job for your selection. Today. Thank you. Thank you. And I mean that, I do truly respect the man that gives us He's been truly, I've learned every day from him, and he's not hampered our progress, and that's just huge to where we're at right now. And I mean that from my heart. <clears throat> so with that, I'll be quiet like the Chiefs need to do, and let our officers get this presentation over. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. The first award given today will be the Meritorious Unit Commendation. This is awarded to any unit, watch, or division which displays exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service, heroic deeds, or valorous actions. The first Meritorious Unit Commendation Award is given to the Galveston Marine Division. During the aftermath of Hurricane Ike, Galveston Police Marine Division 
had an additional duty that cast them directly in contact with deadly elements of the storm. The Galveston PD Marine Division affected water rescues in high winds and floodwaters preceding landfall until they were ordered to shelter. Unbeknownst to many, the officers continued to affect rescues throughout the night until the limitations of their equipment turned them back. These officers break high waters and winds, hidden storm debris, poisonous snakes, infectious disease, and panic storm victims. It is in these actions that GPD Mardiv officers distinguish their unit with outstanding service, heroic deeds, and valorous actions. In keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, I award each of you the meritorious unit commendation. Signed, Henry Pareto, Chief of Police. The second meritorious unit commendation is awarded to the Galveston Special Operations Division. The Special Operations team was made up of officers Chapman, Attaway, Mock, Gross, McNeil, Sergeant Burrell, Sergeant Gray, and commanded by Sergeant Courtney, who were instrumental in several areas of the Galveston Police Department. The Special Operations team taught over 200 hours of classroom classes from elementary children to professionals in their work environment. They assisted in the Citizens Police Academy for monthly meetings and fundraisers to initiating the handicap parking enforcement. They were able to reinstate the Police Explorer program with the Boy Scouts of America. They were able to put together follow-up with the Buffer Zone grant that accounted for almost $200,000 worth of badly needed equipment. They were able to clear hundreds of outstanding warrants and expired data that saved the taxpayers money and the DA's office countless of hours of otherwise wasted manpower warrants beyond the status of limitations. They assisted the U.S. Marshal's Office with Operation Falcon Violent Offenders Fugitive Task Force that accounted for 2,217 arrests of violent offenders an Operation Space City Guardian that involved compliance checks and tracking down hundreds of registered sex offenders throughout Galveston County. They assisted the Galveston Auto Crimes Division with the U.S. Coast Guard and U.S. Customs and Border Patrol in a raid that resulted in the recovery of over $250,000 worth of stolen vehicles, boats, and property. They put together two different stings and arrested two child predators. The, the joint efforts of all these officers brought great credit upon themselves, the Galveston Police Department, and the City of Galveston. I hereby award each of you the meritorious unit accommodation. Signed, Henry Perrotta, Chief of Police. <laughs> the second award given today is a Superior Leadership Award. A Superior Leadership Award is given to any supervisor that conspicuously distinguishes themselves in the execution of their duties and demonstrates superior leadership as a supervisor. One, in the normal performance of his duties, this supervisor must go above and beyond what is reasonably expected. Two, in an extraordinary circumstance, sound decisions and judgment result in a positive resolution in the given situation. Sergeant Courtney, John Courtney, is receiving this award today. Sergeant John Courtney is a supervisor. <laughs> Sergeant Courtney is a supervisor who has a history of distinguishing himself as a superior leader. Sergeant Courtney led a small team of patrol officers and a de detective during the patrol level investigation of a missing female. This team was able to prevent a murder from covering up a murderer from covering up his acts and recover the female's body from under the suspect's house moments before he was successfully arrested and prosecuted. This closure to the victim's family during an unthinkable and tragic event is immeasurable. You will hear more about this event in a few minutes. <laughs> Sergeant Courtney supervised Galveston PD's Marine Division through numerous water rescues after Hurricane Ida. During these efforts, a vast majority of his officers were awarded the Medal of Valor. Sergeant Courtney commanded the Special Ops Unit of GPD. Special Ops procured a grant which delivered over $200,000 worth of desperately needed equipment. Sergeant Courtney led the efforts in procuring another grant for $280,000 that purchased a new boat and truck to pull it. Sergeant Courtney was a supervisor during the events that led to, the, led to at least 28 commendations just today at this ceremony. In keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, I award you the Superior Leadership Award. Signed, Henry Crow, Chief of Police. The next set of awards we'll be giving today are the police commendations. This may be a uh, present to any member whose exceptional performance, uh, presented to any member whose exceptional performance in a specific situation results unusual, re reflects unusual recognition on themselves and the department. The first police commendation is awarded to Sergeants Buck, Officer Allred, and Officer Robert Sanderson. After an aggravated robbery occurred at Radio Shack, dispatch informed officers that the robbery suspect was reportedly in possession of a knife and a gun. Officers Buck, Sanderson, and Allred responded to track down this highly dangerous offender. Officers Buck and Sanderson spotted a male subject matching the description at 53rd Street and Avenue U, and he fled on foot. Giving chase, the officers apprehended the suspect, as well as his plastic bag containing money from the robbery. 
You're hereby awarded the Galveston Police Department's Commendation Award for your exceptional performance in apprehending an armed aggravated robbery suspect. Signed, Henry Prochi. The next police commendation award is presented to Sergeant Courtney, Sergeant Magellino, Officer Mullins, Officer McCuller, and Jamie Osi. After Officer Mullins took a missing person report and communicated his concerns to, Sar to Sergeant Courtney, Sergeant Courtney reviewed the information and along with the suspicious fire at the missing girl's sister's home and believed there to be foul play. Sergeant Courtney could have easily referred this to CID and moved on. His decision to investigate it thoroughly at the patrol level would prove great. Sergeant Courtney, Detective McCuller, Officer Magellino, and Osteen converged on the suspect's home about midday. During his knock and talk, officers forced entry in the home after hearing what was believed to be a struggle or disturbance in the home. Inside the home, the suspect actually climbed in the attic and attempted to hide from the officers. He did this because he had already murdered the missing girl, and during this time, officers found her body under his home. SWAT officers and a canine successfully apprehended the murderer and arrested him. He would be found guilty and awarded a life sentence. As I mentioned earlier, this tragic and horrific event, but the closure given to the victim's family was immeasurable, in keeping with the high standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department. I award each of you the police commendation signed Henry Fred, Chief of Police. The next police commendation is awarded to Officer Lomax, Officer Mullins, and Officer Myers. Officers responded to reports of a deranged man barricaded on the stern of the Lucky Bee shrimp boat with a knife to his chest at the end of Pier 7. He was angry, throwing gear from the boats in a cooperative. Officers baited the deranged man with beer and cigarettes from his position aloft the shrimp boat's rigging. Officer Lomax hid out of sight until the suspect was in a safe position to be tasered. After taser deployment, he was taken into custody without injury. This event was captured by Galveston County Daily News on the cover above the fold. In keeping with the highest tradition, the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, I award each of you the police commendation signed Henry Perry, Chief of Police. The next police commendation is awarded to Officers Draper and Officer Ashton. After two previous burglary reports were taken at 2623 Avenue P by Officer Draper in two days, the victim fired a warning shot in the ground when the burglar came again on the third day. Suspect, suspect information was related in lineup, and Officer Ashton located a suspicious subject later that morning that matched the description. The subject stopped, was carrying a box of frozen meat while on his way to the burglar's victim's residence. Officer Ashton observed a delivery truck unloading at Debellas. The frozen meat was identified belonging to Debellas by manifest. Later, the suspect was identified by the burglary victim. The suspect, likely responsible for numerous daytime burglaries in the area, was charged with both theft and the previous burglaries. In keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, I award each of you the police commendation signed here in front of Chief of Police. Our next police commendation is awarded to Officer Lloyd. Officers were dispatched to 8902 Seawall regarding a robbery. Arriving officers gathered information and broadcasted that actors fled on foot. The victim had been robbed at gunpoint and pistol whipped. While turning on 103rd Street, Officer Lloyd observed a vehicle running through, uh, rushing through a stop sign. She made a U-turn and initiated a traffic stop on the vehicle. Prior to the vehicle coming to a complete stop, Officer Lloyd observed an unknown object uh, get thrown from the passenger side of the vehicle. After searching the vehicle, officers were, were unable were able to find the property that belonged to the victim, as well as the two firearms used during the robbery. The suspects were positively identified as the actors. In keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, Officer Lloyd, you are awarded the police commendation. Signed, Henry Frederick, Chief of Police. The next police commendation is awarded to Lieutenant Joel Caldwell, Houston Police Department Officer Mike Casso, and DEA Agent Jeff Hartsop. The Galveston Police Department was called to the 2800 block of Broadway in reference to a deranged man on top of a business. Witnesses stated the man became high on crack cocaine scaled the fence, and then jumped onto the angled roof. After several attempts to talk the man from the roof with no success, Sergeant Pete Alcacer assembled an arrest team of officers Mike Casso, Jeff Hartsock, and Joel Caldwell. The officers accessed the roof using a tower truck provided by the Galveston Fire Department. Once on the roof, the officers found themselves in a precarious situation. The roof was angled to the point it was hard to maintain balance, much less fight with the subject. Sergeant Alcacer gave the suspect verbal commands to drop a shiny metal object he was holding and submit to arrest. The subject refused, and Alcacer deployed a less lethal beanbag shotgun round into his chest. The suspect became more agitated, and Alcacer fired again. The, suspect team, the arrest team simultaneously rushed the suspect, and a scuffle ensued. Despite poor footing and the danger of sliding off the roof, they were able to subdue and handcuff the suspect without further incident. In keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, you are all awarded the police commendation. Signed, Henry Frederick Chief. Our next award given today is the Civic Achievement Award. The Civic Achievement Award is presented to any officer that participates in or is a member of a voluntary civic organization that's primary purpose is serving the public, 
has been a good member, a good member in good standing for at least five years, has spent at least one of those five years as a board member, and has received no compensation in exchange for his commitment. Our first Civic Achievement Award is awarded to a retired Lieutenant D.J. Alvarez. Lieutenant Alvarez administered, coordinated, and supervised the Galveston Police Department's Blue Santa Project for the last 10 years. In this outreach program in the Galveston Police Department is one of the highest profile services we provide in the community. Lieutenant Alvarez devoted countless hours and energy, often gathering the presence and food by himself, to ensure the neediest children of Galveston had Christmas. His dedication and devotion to service is in keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department. Signed, Henry Ferretto, Chief of Police. The next Civic Achievement Award is presented to Lieutenant Joel Caldwell. Lieutenant Caldwell has served as a volunteer, foster parent, and board member with the Galveston Island Humane Society for the past 10 years. His dedication and devotion to service is in keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department. Signed, Henry Ferretto, Chief of Police. Achievement Award is presented to Captain Joe Pena. <clears throat> Captain Pena is recognized for his service to the West Isle Little League, Island Little League, Galveston Riptide Youth Football Team, and Moody Methodist Church Winter Basketball Team. Captain Pena has served as a coach and director for these organizations. He is commended for his service to the community and dedication to those he serves. Signed, Henry Correa, Chief. <clears throat> the Our next award given today will be the Life Saver. This may be awarded to any member in recognition of saving human life. The first life-saving award is given to Sergeant Larry Chambers. On the night of September 10, 2010, officers Gaspar and Rose were dispatched to 1108 Avenue Chief regarding a possible suicidal subject. Upon arrival, the officers were met by the reporting who stated his wife had possibly hurt herself in the bathroom. He further reported that his gun safe was open and his Mini-14 Ranch rifle was missing from the safe. The officers relayed the information to the supervisor, Sergeant Larry Chambers. Sergeant Chambers directed them to stage outside the residence and await his arrival due to their potential encounter with an armed subject with a rifle. Minutes later, Sergeant Chambers arrived and took control of the scene. Together with officers Waite, Gaspard, and Rose, they methodically cleared the house to the bathroom door. The door was secured. The team announced their presence with no response. Believing that the victim was in danger, Sergeant Chambers <coughs> forced entry into the bathroom. He immediately observed a female lying in a bathtub with her nose and mouth submerged in water. The tub was approximately one-third full and she was drowning. Sergeant Chambers removed her from the tub and summoned emergency medical help. Sergeant Larry Chambers' scene management and sound decisions undoubtedly led to the saving the life, the sa to life, to saving the life of this young woman. Sergeant Chambers is commended for his actions taken on September 10, 2010, which were in keeping with the highest standards and traditions, and is hereby awarded the Gospel Police Department's Life Saving Award. Signed, Henry Perreto, Chief of Police. Today, uh, given today, will be the second highest award you can receive from the Galveston Police Department, which is the Medal of Valor. Our first Medal of Valor is awarded to Officer Carl Lomax. Officer Lomax responded to a house fire at 1319 40th Street. Upon arrival, Officer Lomax encountered a chaotic scene with the front portion of the residence fully involved in the fire. And bystanders frantically pleading that two children were located inside. Officer Lomax chose not to wait for the fire department and entered the building with the burning structure to search for the children. Unbeknownst to Officer Lomax, the children had escaped out the rear. Officer Lomax became trapped himself and laid on the floor, breathing through a towel until rescued by firemen. Officer Lomax's display of bravery and selfless dedication reflects highly upon the strongest traditions of valor in the Galveston Police Department. And I hereby award you the Medal of Valor. Thank you. Our next Medal of Valor is awarded to Officer Scott Pena. Officer Scott Pena responded as a backup officer to reports of a suicidal female at 1516 Market. After first, arriving first, Officer Pena made contact with a female who was visibly distraught. While speaking with her, she attempted to distract Officer Pena by turning on the gas stove. In the seconds that Officer Pena's attention was given to the stove, she picked up a kitchen knife in an apartment in an apparent attempt to injure either herself or him. Acting swiftly and calmly to the new threat, and after a brief struggle, Officer Pena pried the knife from the lady's hand. She was taken into custody without injury. Officer Pena's display of calm, cool-headed bravery reflects highly upon the strongest traditions of valor in the Galveston Police Department. And I hereby award you the Medal of Valor, signed Henry Perreto, Chief. Our final Medal of Valor today is awarded to Sergeant Matthew Magellino and Sergeant Destin Sims. Galveston Police Officer dispatched to the area of 29th Street and Post Office in reference to a man with a gun call. Officer Sims approached the area and observed a male and female argument. Officer Sims observed that the male was armed with a handgun and immediately drew his weapon and ordered the male to drop the gun. 
Officer Matthew Magellino approached the scene and took up a position next to Officer Sims and also began issuing verbal commands for the male to drop the gun. The female victim ran from the scene as the suspect was distracted by the officers. The suspect then raised the gun and attempted to point it at the officers. Both Officer Sims and Officer Magellino were forced to fire their service weapons to protect their lives and the lives of innocent citizens in the area. The suspect sustained three gunshot wounds. He was transported to John Seeley Hospital, where he survived his injuries. Subsequent interviews with the suspect revealed that his actions were intentional. He admitted to firing the gun early in the evening inside of the residence and further stated he wanted the police to kill him. Both officers were well aware of the danger involved, yet still never hesitated to act and exhibited unusual courage in the performance of their duties in neutralizing what was clearly a deadly threat. In keeping with the highest standards and traditions of the Galveston Police Department, I hereby award you the police commendation. I hereby award you the Medal of Valor. Signed, Henry Fred, Chief of Police. I once again ask you to join me in recognizing efforts of all these officers today. Captain Joe Bean. Stand up again. On October 28, 2011, Captain Joe Bean, you will have officially retired from his many years of service to the city of Galveston's police department. Joe Bean began his law enforcement career in 1988, working as a jailer for the Galveston County Sheriff's Department. In May of 1990, he began his employment with the city of Galveston Police Department as a night watch patrolman. The same year, he was selected as a SWAT operator which only com comprised of a select group of personnel within the department. In 1994, Joe passed promotional exams to advance to the rank of sergeant. After serving in the department for two years as a first line supervisor on patrol, he had accepted an investigative assignment in the warrant division and later served as a major case investigator. In 2005, Joe Pena ambitiously pursued his advancement to the rank of lieutenant. Serving in this capacity for four years, he was appointed to such positions as Commander of Major Crimes, Commander of CSI, and the SWAT Team Commander. In April of 2009, Joe was promoted to the level of Captain. He was given command of the Operations Bureau, which is the largest component of the Police Department. Joe Pena has held that position from 2009 to present. Throughout his career, he has worked diligently to further his education. Joe obtained his an associate's degree in, in criminal justice from Galveston College. He is also a graduate of FBI's National Academy, as well as the FBI Elite Command Institute. He holds a master's peace officer certification through T-Close and has completed several modules of the Bill Blackwood Law Enforcement Institute. We wish Joe Pena all the best in his future endeavors. His time has now come to join the vast number of brave souls who have completed their tour of duty with the oldest law enforcement agency in the state of Texas. Department of Surgeon 
to the city of Galveston Police Department. Growing up in nearby Houston, Dr. Ivey received a basketball scholarship from Rice University where he graduated in 1967. He went on to earn his medical, medical degree at UTMB by 1971. Dr. Ivey then took his first of many oaths when serving our country as a Navy Lieutenant and a medical squadron aboard patrol gunboats in Guam. By 1978, he completed his orthopedic surgery residency at UCMB, followed by fellowship in sports medicine and knee reconstruction in Los Angeles. A constant educator, Dr. Ivey continued his efforts to improve the field of orthopedic medicine while serving as a full-time UTMB faculty member for 30 years. His leadership and participation in the field of research produced numerous publications and presentations for which he has been recognized both nationally and internationally. Throughout his career, Dr. Ivey has treated countless injuries sustained by athletes, both professionals and amateurs alike. Raised the son of an FBI agent, Dr. Ivey and his wife Bobby have demonstrated their fondness for law enforcement personnel through their yearly donations of safety equipment to our police department and many other activities. We at the Galveston Police Department are truly indebted to Dr. Ivey for his exceptional citizenry and dedication to his profession. He has amassed a lifetime of knowledge in the field of medicine and it is a relief to our personnel that they will be cared for by the best of the best. Our second nominee and recipient is Robert Thomas, a retired sergeant and 20 year veteran of the Houston Police Department. Robert Thomas has an intimate knowledge of the obstacles faced with today's law enforcement professionals. His experience as both an officer and an administrative supervisor has helped <clears throat> forge a strong foundation to understanding with respect to the field of policing. While employed by the Houston Police Department, Mr. Thomas earned his bachelor's degree in criminal justice at Abilene Christian College University Metro Center. He went on to earn a Doctor of Jurisprudence at the South Texas College of Law in 1989. His post-law enforcement employment includes certified hearing examiner for the employment disputes of the Texas Education Agency, assistant general counsel for the Combined Law Enforcement Agencies of Texas, the general counsel for the Houston Police Officers Union, and the general counsel to the Afro-American Police Officers League. Now practicing an attorney and counsel of law, Robert Thomas has further honed his skills in the areas of public sector law enforcement, commercial and labor arbitration, general civil litigation. Armed with this broad range of experience, Robert Thomas can impart a unique perspective when dealing with controversy. His deep connection to law enforcement and well-rounded skill set makes him a perfect fit as an advisor to the Galveston Police Department. The department looks forward to his with great anticipation to seeking his counsel in face of future issues that need and needs for labor dispute resolution or anything close to that. Now our final recipient, everybody knows, I hope. Cecil Butch Stroud, a native to the state hailing from Sinton, Texas. Cecil Butch Stroud's family moved to Santa Fe area when he was a child. He married his high school sweetheart, Linda, and together they have two children and a total of five grandchildren. His daughter, Brandy, a nurse, and his son, Brad, presently serves as citizen Galveston as a patrol officer. Butch began his career in policing after attending the police academy at Alba Community College in 1988. Upon receiving his TCO certification, he worked as a police officer at both the Port of Galveston and the Jamaica Beach Police Department. In 1990, Butch found his home among the ranks of the Galveston Police Department. He served his first eight years of his career as a night watch patrol officer before finding a way to join two of his passions, joining two of his passions, policing and motorcycling. The name Butch Stroud became synonymous with the term motorcycle cop. His high work ethic, keen eye, and no-nonsense approach to police earned him a distinct reputation of being fair but tough. It's rumored that his own family members were even too scared to drive through his jurisdiction. <laughs> <laughs> During his career, Butch earned the Master of Peace Officer certification in addition to being a uh, member of one... I'm sorry. Let me start over. During his career, Butch... Butch earned his Master's Peace Officer certification in addition to being one of the department's uh, TCO certified instructors. By 2009, Butch was promoted to rank of sergeant, where he served as mentor and leader to some of the youngest officers in the department. Near the end of 2010, Butch retired from the Galveston Police Department after 20 years of outstanding service. 
He has remained a retired police reserve, but returned to the city to work as a civilian employee within the chief's administrative staff. Not even retirement has been able to slow Butch down or his work ethic. In addition to his many responsibilities, Butch has been, is being appointed the commander of the Galveston Police Reserves. So I would ask y'all to give all three of these gentlemen a round of applause. Constitution of the United States of America. You know how to start that over. <laughs> My picks. I will support and comply with the Constitution of the United States of America. I will support and comply with the Constitution of the United States of America. And the laws of the state of Texas. And the laws of the state of Texas. And the ordinances of the city of Galveston. And the ordinances of the city of Galveston. The rules and regulations of the Galveston Police Department. The rules and regulations of the Galveston Police Department. Code of, law enforcement code of ethics. Law enforcement code of ethics. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. And I will faithfully discharge my duties. Of office as. Of office as. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Thank each and every one. Thank you. Now the last part of our award ceremony is to many people that have supported our organization throughout the years. And if there's one person that's probably raised so many policemen in this department, <laughs> Ms. Glass Jones, could you come up and show Jones has helped so many programs that were near, fa near failing, and she's done so many thousands of hours of community work, and she has truly been a proponent of regular police officers working in the field. And if you don't know her before you leave, I'd ask you to meet her too, because she's truly raised hundreds of policemen. And it's with great honor the police department to thank you for all your years of service and everything you've done for the law enforcement. Thank you, sir. There's no secret that, uh, we've, you know, for 20-something years I know of, we've always had money problems. I don't think we've ever came to work and they said, hey, we've got money, go spend money, buy what you need. And with that, it, it inspires the officers and the people that work with us and for us. And I'd like to know to note and to honor somebody that has left office. Uh, John Bernard, John was home somewhere. John was a resident agent for the uh, FBI in Texas City, and he's recently retired. But during his tenure, prior to his retirement, he helped and set some systems in place that would help us continue to be funded and perpetuate some of the work we're doing both on and off the island with other components of law enforcement. And it's, it's a great honor to have somebody care about our department enough that was leaving to make sure that we could further the law enforcement mission for our county, our state, and our country. And I just wanted to make sure that we recognize somebody that did something even after they're gone. Mr. Kelvin, Daryl Kelvin, Officer Kelvin. Uh, recently, the uh, Galveston Police Department changed computer systems, and that's a monumental task, even if it's a good system. 
Officer Covenant was instrumental in helping train all of our personnel. Our transition technically went, it was smooth. It really was smooth. The, the hiccups we had were minimal. Uh, the biggest problems we had was somebody was cutting the lines on the highway that didn't have anything to do with either one of us. And I really attribute his professionalism. He's never any tiring, working, making sure, answering stupid questions, making sure that we were right on target and we wanted to make sure that somebody that helped us move into the 21st century was really recognized also. Thank you for your work. Judge Schweitzer. <laughs> truly, truly, truly a gentleman. We are lucky to have Judge Schweitzer in our community. He holds two positions, but the one thing that he's continually done is display leadership and guidance, and he has always responded to our request for help. Uh, I can tell you some stories about the storm. The judge was there for this community. He's reasonable. We don't get everything we want, but we have access. He listens, and he's all, always offered good guidance, good leadership. And I just am, I'm excited that we have somebody that's working with our department in our community. And we want to make sure that you know our department appreciates you, Ron. Thank you very much. Mike Sanders. Mike Sanders is the new uh, resident agent in charge in uh, the Galveston office from DEA. As far as partnerships go, another gentleman that knows our constraints. We have forged some great relationships that have helped us move through our cutbacks. We have additional vehicles, funding. We, we've been able to do some things we wouldn't have been able to do, and people put their self at risk to help us, and that is huge. And we've been successful with what we have, but our partners have helped us, and I can't thank them enough. Uh, within weeks we met, we've forged some good things. Good things are coming, and I think you're going to be very, very proud of the relationship we have with DEA, and soon you will see some great results. Thank you. 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 all your people and your team. I really appreciate that. My friend Brad Deardor from the FBI. <laughs> That's a private joke. Most of the cops here know. Uh, also, taking Mr. Denard's place briefly was Mr. Deardor, Special Agent Deardor from the Texas City office. We also, we got off to a good start. And uh, we're on the same page now. Really, I wanted to make sure everybody knows. The FBI office in Texas City is also as valuable to us as the DEA office. Uh, they actually fund some of our operation that's going on. And those things are huge and they're critical to what we're doing, recovery, and our efforts across city lines. So, those things are important, and uh, I give Mr. Deardor a hard time because that's the way it goes. <laughs> One of our newest partners, Ice Scott Arnold, please. Thank you. I appreciate it. So let me. Do you ain't leaving? Actually, with Mr. Arnold, we were able to do a few things. We've actually found some money in, from Washington. Not much, but we're able to, uh, we signed an agreement. We have two officers that are working on child pornography after their regular tour of duty several hours a week with ICE. And uh, I think that's going to have a huge impact on our city. We just did a search warrant last week. 
with that, with the feds. We got good results. We, we got the case just about cleaned up. We're waiting on the U.S. Attorney's Office. I'm not going to say anything there. <laughs> but uh, we're doing good with that, and, and that was a good relationship, and I hope we continue that because we've been very successful. We thank you for what you did to make that happen. Excellent. Yes, thank you. Combos from the United States Marshal Service. They left? Oh, there he is. Okay. Actually, we just, uh, I think it was a month ago, we ended up uh, signing an MOU with the United States Marshal Service. We've got a person that's going to be deputized, one of their marshals. Two nights ago, we've already used their service in Angleton. We have a murder suspect that's in custody. Uh, thanks to the relationship we have with them, we didn't have to send but two or three of our people to Angleton. The Violent Offenders Task Force had him in custody within 24 hours, CID. Everybody had everybody in custody, and it's as good as it gets. And we appreciate the relationship that we have with you, because you were very instrumental in that MOU. Thank you. No thongs. They have a uniform. <laughs> Actually, uh, it's really important that everybody knows, during, especially during the night, the beach patrol, the gallops of the beach patrol, helped. They made over two, three, four hundred rescues. I mean, invaluable. We've continually drawn on the beach patrol. We're integrating them into our service. Everybody's working together. We're being economical, and Peter Davis has always been there for us. Uh, and we really want to make sure that the Beach Patrol know that they're actually included in our hurricane plan now and they're uh, very representative of a, a professional organization. We thank you for everything you've done, Peter. You know, great. Right. We're co close to concluding. We only have four awards left, and I'll be glad to do that. First, uh, the next one is the Lieutenant Mike Benamy is from the Galveston County Sheriff's Office. In our world, in our law enforcement world, leadership is a, is a really huge thing. And there's those people that display those traits. And Deputy Benavides, when he started, he worked with us in several different details. And Sheriff Ford made a wise decision to promote him. But we've always worked together. He's always, whenever we're in a pinch, we always call Benavides from the county. Benavides from the county. Over the last several years, we've been able to do great things. We, the last major war roundup we had on the mainland, we put together some, several of them, and we were very successful. And those are the things that administrators need, good leaders. And you keep wearing the guy out, and nobody ever tells them thank you. I just want to make sure that the Sheriff's Department knows they have a good man. We tried to steal him several times, Sheriff. You won't leave. Don't blame him, but we want to thank you for your service. <laughs> Tom Ingalls, my new buddy. <laughs> uh, Tom Ingalls has just been awarded the uh, Super Chief of Police Awards from the University of Texas System, but when he first, when I first was appointed to my job, we got together, talked a little bit. Within 24 hours, we uh, developed a program. We actually have a UTMB officer assigned to our narcotics unit. They're working together. Both agencies are talking now. We're accomplishing great things. Uh, we've also done some other things with destruction of evidence, and Tom Ingalls has really been a partner uh, our communications with UTMB has nothing but increased. He's an asset to our community, and he, he didn't just talk the talk. He, he put up and he helped us, and I, I just, it's just great. And that kind of leadership that we all need right now, especially in our tough economic times. And from my heart, I want to make sure you need to yes, 
Chief Burby. I, I can only I can only remember the the call at, right after Hurricane Ike landed. What do y'all need? Well, what is every police? We just lost three police cars. We need police cars coming over the causeway. Chief Burby, two captains, and the chief driving some marketing for us. They were able to bring some cars for us, help us get on, get our wheels rolling. Continually, every time we ask for something, we ask for one, he gives us six. We've asked for operations, we've got plenty of help, continually helping us. And, and these people help, and, and we never said thank you, man. And it's really something that's important to us. That we know we appreciate it. Our community needs it. And, and I just want to tell you, Chief Burby, thank you for all your help, especially for me personally. Oh, you're welcome. All right.